Today, we're going to compare some classic favorite champions from Mobile Legends and League of Legends while Rift. Let's go. Just for the thrill of it, nothing kind of it with you. Just the thrill of it. Just for the thrill of it, nothing kind of it. Yo guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy Assassin Dave. I hope you guys enjoyed the last episode of Wall Rift vs Mobile Legend Champion Comparison. I received lots of requests to compare some of your favorite champions, so today we will do exactly just that. But first, remember to drop that like, subscribe, and turn the bell on to all notification bells so you do not miss the coolest, greatest, the baddest channel in the world of League of Legends Wall Rift and our daily live streams and giveaways. So with that, Let's jump into the video. Coming first to today's list is Wall Rift's Akali versus Mobile Legend Gushin. Both are assassins in the game. Both have insane amount of bursts if you land your combo properly. Both are stylish, eye-catching, and hot in their own way. The major difference is Akali is a lot and a lot more conditional than Gushin. She might be more mobile than Gushin in a skirmish when she has her ability available. But it's so conditional to whether she lands her skill shot or not, or whether Akali has her ultimate. And differently from Gushin, Akali's ultimate is extremely long cooldown. Gushin's ult is so short that players frequently use it just to clear jungle camps or even lane minions. In addition, Akali has no actual gap closer if there is no target to jump on. So she's fairly easy to gank since Akali is so squishy and again her mobility is very situational. Gushin on the other hand, if she sees trouble coming, double tap the ultimate and he's out of there. If he sees the squishy target alone, double tap the ultimate and two other skills, it's an instant kill. If Gushin sees a tanky target, double tap the ultimate and two other skills, it's an instant kill, thanks to his passive. Basically, Gushin can kill anyone alone fast and easy. The mechanic required might seem difficult to the level of Mobile Legends, but for relatively speaking to Wall Rift, it's like asking a baby who can walk to crawl again. Similarly to Gushin, Akali in teamfight is more like a finisher and observer. She is very team dependent, but Akali's difficulty in teamfights is on a whole another level. On one side, it's extremely hard for Akali to deal with tanky targets. On the other side, Akali is very, very squishy with conditional mobility. If you fail to connect one of your skill, you become immediately irrelevant for the next minutes or so. And all Gushin needs to do is to wait for 10 extra seconds and he will get all his ultimate back again. Overall, both champions have dash abilities and throw a lot of daggers and playstyle is similar. Assassins who need to flank enemy backline, but the execution of the two champions are are very very different. Oh and did I mention Gushin is a guy and Akali is a girl of course. Next up on our comparison list today is Orianna from Wall Rift and Kagura from Mobile Legends. If you happen to see both champions you will immediately spot the similarities between the two. Orianna can control a ball around herself on the battlefield and her entire kit revolves around that ball whereas Kagura controls an umbrella which is similar to a ball, and her entire kit revolves around that umbrella. They're both meta mid lane mages thanks to their tremendous contribution in Team 5. They both have some very cute skins and are very popular among the kids. Despite the similarities, the difference between Orianna and Kagura is huge. The biggest difference between the two is mobility. Orianna does not possess any gap closer or teleport skills at all. Yes, she can maneuver her balls around the battlefield, but she cannot maneuver herself or dash to the balls or dash away from them. All she can do is control the ball to move towards her or move away from her. Kagura, on the other hand, can freely dash to the umbrella or dash away from it. The damage is all infused in hitting the umbrella itself. You don't have to add additional spells to achieve the purpose of poke per se. Now, if you do decide to dash onto your umbrella, it also stuns the target and then you can easily dash away. Kagura's ultimate is also a continuous skill. You can move your skill, your ultimate, while casting it in order to pull enemy to the center. But Orianna, on the other hand, if you miss, you miss. There's no second chance. Well, at least for the next minute or so. On top of that, Kagura's ultimate effective range is also much, much smaller compared to Kagura. Overall, Orianna requires very accurate skill cast despite your skill frequency is very high. 
and Oriana from Wall Rift also requires much better positioning due to lack of mobility. Whereas Kagura, you can do whatever you want, really. I mean, with little punishment. It's much easier to control and you will feed a lot less. Coming to the third comparison today is your Meta's favorite Evelyn from Wall Rift versus Natalia from Mobile Legends. They both have signature invisibility skill and they're both formidable assassins who can one-shot enemy squishies or backlines if done properly. Interestingly, their playstyle are extremely similar, but Natalia from Mobile Legends is physical damage type assassin, whereas Evelyn is magic damage type assassin. The biggest distinction between the two are control difficulties. Natalia is drastically easier than Evelyn, again, similar to other comparisons. Natalia gets a one second grace in this period when she approaches enemy, meaning she will remain invisible even if she stands right on top of you for a second. This made it really easy for Natalia to engage and approach enemy. On top of that, Natalia's first attack out of invisibility silences the target, which give her a lot of leeway to follow up with more damage or simply dash away thanks to her insane mobility. Evelyn, however, will be revealed a little bit outside of her engage range, meaning if enemy players can react fast enough, they can see Evelyn before you land any skills important. In addition, Evelyn does not have instantaneous control skills like Natalia. Evelyn's charm skill requires her to apply the skill on her target and then wait for a good 2.5 seconds and then hit another skill or auto attack to activate it. Do mind you that during that 2.5 seconds, the intended target will be notified that he or she is getting charmed, you know, and they will have a good 2.5 seconds to either escape or get their teammates ready to set up and protect this person. But to the advantage of Evelyn, her unique passive allows Evelyn to regenerate HP when she's invisible. So Evelyn is all about going in, trade a little bit of HP, hide herself, and go back in and surprise your enemy again. There are a lot of back and forth in and out. Not only do you have to understand your limitations, but you also have to be very alert and very informed at all time on the battlefield. Is there anyone below execution line that you can go back in and kill? Is there anyone who is going to be recalling that you can pick up? There are a lot of things that you have to consider while playing Evelyn, but once you get good at those, you will get good at a lot of other champions that you can play in Wall Rift. Last but not the least, we have the comparison between two classic heroes or champions, whatever you like to call them, from each game. Garen from Wall Rift versus Belmond from Mobile Legends. It's not hard to tell the similarities between the two champions. Both can spin and both can execute kills based on enemies missing HP. Both are bruisers, fighters, looking champion. But if we have to be honest here, guys, Garen is just much better looking champion than Bellman. I mean, his champion model looks better, his skill of flasher, and there are a lot of really cool skins of Garen that only cost you $10 a pop. I mean, he shouts Demacia every time Garen used that ultimate. Interestingly, Garen is just as easy to use as Bellman, mechanically speaking. You charge in, do your spin, and use your ultimate. Now, on the same note, Wall Rift overall is a lot more complicated. So there might be a lot more details involved on when you want to go in and use your spin. But you still just go in and spin to glory like Bellman from Mobile Legends. So if you're looking for an entry level champion to experience Wall Rift, Garen is probably your number one free champion choice to go. Honestly speaking, there are just not too much differences between the two champions. Garen and Belmont. Belmont is also one of the easiest heroes in Mobile Legends. If you're new to MOBA overall and you want something easy to maneuver in a casual game like ML, then go with Belmont, run and spin, throw the ultimate down, you're good to go. Sometimes if you're cool enough, you can even add a flicker on top of it just to add some extra flavor to the game. But we all know a three-year-old could also pull it off. So don't get too ahead of yourself when you're playing Bellman. But do enjoy the fun. Anyways, this will conclude our comparison for today. Which version of the heroes or champions do you like better? Feel free to leave a comment down below. And again, do not forget to hit a like, subscribe, and turn that bell on to all notification bells. Love you guys, and I will see you on our next live stream. Bye now. Just for the thrill of it. Nothing counterfeit with you Just the thrill of it